Hello, I'm Alan Girding, and this is Designer Diary. It's part of the TKTV YouTube channel, the channel all about me trying to convince you to go to TuesdayNightGames.com and buy all of our shit today. But specifically, Designer Diary is a show all about enhancing your tabletop experience through designer tips. Whether it be any role-playing game like Dungeons and Dragons, Mothership, or my own upcoming role-playing game, Father Fong, or if it's just any other tabletop game that may use dice, cards, chits, whatever. But this show is for you. So if you like playing role-playing games, running role-playing games, tabletop games, designing tabletop games, we hope you enjoy this little series. And today's episode is all about the best notebook for your role-playing games and your tabletop game designs. Because if you're like me, when you go into any type of bookstore, you're drawn like a moth to the flame to the journal section. Yes, these bundles of covered paper draw me to them because I like to see a blank notebook filled in with my own ideas, drawings, sketches, but definitely when it comes to game design and preparing for my role-playing game sessions, this is the heaven upon which my ideas and planning ascend. I know, getting kind of lofty here, so let me digress and talk about which notebook or notebooks I think are simply the best because, man, oh man, I have way too many of these things. There's so much to consider. What size is right? Meaning, we're talking uh, length and width here. How much table space do you want your notebook to take? Is smaller better or bigger better? But then you also have the thickness. How fat is this thing? Does it go boom, boom when you drop it down? Or does it almost flutter away in the wind because it's super thin? Then we also have to talk about the cover. Do you want something hard and durable? Something you could use as a weapon to defend yourself if you're in a pinch? Pew, pew, wah. Or maybe flimsies more to your liking. Something you can roll up like a newspaper and swat a fly with it. Or fit easier into a bag that may be moving around. And perhaps the most important aspect what kind of pages do you want in this ding dang thing? Do you need the guidance and help of ruled pages? Or do you want the absolute freedom and chaos of totally blank pages? Your imagination is your limitation. Or do you want specifically grid paper so that you can design maps and dungeons better? Or do you go with the hybrid of them all? Dotted pages, yes. And of course, there's the accoutrements the extras that you can get in each of these little notebooks. Do you want a bookmark ribbon, perhaps? Or maybe there's storage inside, little envelopes you can put stuff in. A three ring binder, perhaps? What? Maybe you need a place to store your pen. So you're gonna get a notebook with a little pen loop in there. There's so many extras you can find. The choice is up to you and your ability to find these things. So without further ado, let's look at some of these bitches that I've collected. This here green notebook has a faux leather covering with a wrap and it's a three ring binder which allows you to customize the pages. This is the same notebook I discussed on the last episode of Designer Diary. I recommend you check it out. It's all about collaborative delegation. Let's talk about sizes. We're gonna go down this list here of the comparisons. This is a pretty big, hefty journal has a leather cover to it, but then look at this tiny piece of shit. How am I ever gonna use this? I don't know what this would be, except maybe a novelty. But then let's talk about the cover surface. This one's nice and hard, but it's a little bit of hybrid, because it does have some flexibility. Unlike this one, solid, very little flexibility. Well, this one, look what I can do with it. Woo -woo. It is flimsy as all hell, meaning you can use it in tight corners. Look at this fat bish next to this little flimsy thin thing. The benefit of having a thin journal is you will get a better sense of accomplishment because it's easier to fill. Whereas with this fat thing, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere and may just give up. Ah! So let's talk paper preferences. You got the classic ruled, you got the grid, which helps you make these wonderful maps. You also have the chaotic blank, exercising your artistic abilities. And then there's the dot, the hybrid of them all. Is it ruled? Is it graph paper? Is it blank? <laughs> kind of. Whew. 
Let's look at this little notebook, the little notebook that could. It is so full of accoutrements, extras. Has a pen loop to store your pen. Storage? What? Close it with an elastic band? It has ribbons to mark your place? I've never even heard of a notebook that has freaking storage. So you know what I did? I just glued a freaking envelope into one of my favorite notebooks. That's customization, yo. All right, it's time I give you some pro tips on organization. I've been doing this for years and I realize I don't date my shit and I should. Cause look at that, 2008, it's like a historic document. That's why I really love this notebook, which I'll talk about more later, that has dates built in. So it reminds you, hey, anytime you write something in, make sure you mark the date. But it also has spots in the lower corners that allow you to put page numbers. But you notice, I highlighted them, why? Because it is so hard to organize your ideas, separate as they may be, in a single notebook. Look at my past efforts. Then I came across this colorful lady. Woo. All of these colors can pre-separate your game ideas. Unfortunately, this forces you to use the same amount of pages for each of your concepts. This is why I use highlighters. <laughs> Let me show you. Notice the highlighters in the upper corners. I've done the Roy G. Biv thing going down. That way, even from the outside of the notebook, if I look at the binding, I can flip through and readily see different categories for different ideas, different game adventures, different game designs. It's a wonderful thing that I recommend you do. That way, no matter how jumbled your ideas are, you can use these freaking highlighters to organize them and quickly find your different games. Here's an example. Trying to make a D100 list of magical artifacts, but found that you have separate ideas in between? Connect them with the pink highlighter. Let's talk about that scuff mark. Got it covered up with stickers. You've probably noticed most of my notebooks are customized with stickers because I love me some stickers. So let's put one on this one. I've narrowed my sticker decision down to these three. It comes in waves. Let's get this bread and some bizarre smiley face. It comes in waves, it is. It's sticker peeling time. I, fuck, I just ripped it. Let's make it prettier. Got it. There we go. Oh, the satisfaction of putting a sticker on something. And now this notebook looks more beautiful than it once was, and now I'm even more likely to dive into it. That's motivation. Make your notebook yours so you want to put your ideas in it. But carefully don't make it too pretty. What do I mean? Look at this gorgeous mothership notebook made by a mothership sticker, TuesdayNightGames.com. But it's empty, as is this one. Because if a journal, a notebook, a diary is so beautiful you're intimidated to write in it like this one, there's no way my ugly stupid ideas are good enough for that beauty. Here's one though where the beauty helped. I was going to be an officiant at a wedding. And so I wrote my speech and everything right in this notebook because I thought this is gonna look pretty enough to hold in my hand in front of the bride and groom. But this ugly little notebook I write in all the time. The uglier the notebook, the better. That's kind of why I recommend this. It's the best of both worlds. It has so many extras. It has a space to glue your envelope. It has ribbons. But look at this beautiful thing. This is a bookmarker, a ruler, but also has stencils to help you if you're going to be creating your maps for all of your role-playing games and it conveniently fits in this back pocket. It has colored ridges around the pages. It has a perfect balance of beauty and a whole bunch of utility. I'll leave a link below. So this begs the final question. Damn it, Alan, just tell me what is the best notebook. Is it the one you just showed me or is it the tiny one? Is it a beautiful one? The best notebook is always going to be the one that you will use. So please think of everything we've talked about here. Let me know your thoughts. Do you have a favorite notebook? Did I miss something? Subscribe or die and let me know the notebook that you will use. Hey, thanks so much. Comment below. I love you.